I really, really like it when enemies compliment me for my skill. Thank you. Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder to the Sparaviero. And this is one of two Italian premiums that will grant you access to the closed beta test of the Italian naval forces. Now, a disclaimer ahead. I got this ship from Gaijin because I requested it, and, uh, you know, I didn't pay a single cent for it. But as it stands right now, my verdict is that, sadly, the Italian tech tree is obsolete it's not worth it and also the Ciniere, the 4.3 battle rating destroyer is absolutely hopelessly underpowered in comparison which i will make a review on to show you the statistics now back to the ship in question the sparaviero it is really difficult to nail down this one on a single problem or uh, to say it's overpowered or it's underpowered because you have the full spectrum from being completely overpowered as we'll see in this first scene and when the stars align but this doesn't tell you the full story because on the other end of the spectrum you're completely hopelessly underpowered and this is also uh, depending on the battle rating we're talking here about a patrol boat of battle rating 3.7 at rank 2 that can face 2.7 ships and 4.7 destroyers now again just look at the carnage here just look at how I blap here the ships and the rate of fire and this is such a Italian diva such a drama queen this is the Lamborghini amongst patrol boats it's expensive it is absolutely awesome under the right circumstances but it's not really practical in a daily use term and yeah i think that this is very fitting for this ship again the first scene might be deceiving so please watch the entirety of the footage if you can't stand my voice then just mute me and just watch for yourself what happens because the gameplay footage speaks for itself now the main selling point of this thing or the two main selling points are that this is practically the basis or the hull of the PGO2 but instead of a 20 millimeter gatling that just shreds everything that it comes across it is equipped with a 76 millimeter slash 62 auto Milara compact automatic gun with 115 rounds of ammunition so um, some called it the flotomatic uh, or this is an automatic on water but it's actually not that good now let's go through the statistics of the gun and uh, let's just throw in some statistics so that we know that we know what we we're talking about so 115 rounds of ammunition total if you have um, shells in the first stage ammo rack then you have a rate of fire of 85 rounds per minute that is a reload rate of 0.7 seconds which seals the deal of low tier ships quite quickly if you're out of ammunition then the rate of fire goes down considerable and you have uh, 21 rounds per minute that is significantly longer now the gun handling sounds really good you have minus 15 degrees of gun depression 85 degrees of gun elevation uh, you have a turret rotation speed of 60 degrees per second and also horizontally you go 35 degrees per second that is really high tier tank feeling if you will and you also have very good firing arcs however this ship doesn't like a rolling sea it likes a flat flat calm sea and it also doesn't really like to go fast and shooting at ships that are right in front of it because the bow is just whipping up and down wobbling all the time and that just throws off your um your aim and also at close quarters sometimes it's really tricky the ship itself is also pretty pretty fragile now let's talk because it has absolutely no armor and you know there are there is some nasty opposition now let's talk about the ammunition the ammunition is more or less the same as on the automatic with the exception of APFSDS. so we have as the base he the 76 62 he mom and that is uh, 925 meters per second which is great the accuracy even at longer ranges is really really great the tnt equivalent uh, bursting charge is 
1.1 kilograms and 15 millimeters of armor penetration. Then versus the more tougher opposition that have some armor or where you want to shoot through the bow, um, you have the 76-62 Sapom and that has also 925 meters per second mass velocity, a TNT equivalent of 655 grams and up to 60 millimeters of penetration. Um, but obviously at then 5,000 meters, which is the maximum here on the stat card, the penetration is a mere 32 millimeters and at angled armor only 12 millimeters. And then versus some aircraft, in theory, you have the HE MOM with the variable time fuse or the proximity fuse. Um, again, 925 meters per second, 1.1 kilograms of bursting charge, 15 millimeters of penetration. Now, the problem is... Um, I have another scene later versus a big bomber and I just can't hit it because the radar lock on doesn't really work that properly. And another thing is Gajin, you know, I'm sorry, but this is unacceptable. This is the objective that I'm in and I have grounded. There is no real indication on the minimap and only by uh, changing from going forwards to backwards and doing some tricks i have fought already here like for three or four minutes i get the warning you'll leave vehicle in two minutes because i'm stuck in shallow water because this is at the end of the day a hydrofoil that means it's really fast in a straight line but if you think that it also has great maneuverability because you are used to the stuff from the pgo2 gachin has changed how hydrofoils now work or how this works in comparison to the pgo2 uh, a few patches back because it doesn't like to turn and even if you initiate the turn and you lift the finger off the A or D key depending on which direction you want to go then it, it more or less goes back now this is now the radar issue that I'm talking about I have the radar lock on and I point exactly uh, where the radar gives me the lock on now to have radar is great you see aircraft coming and I just want him to get closer Another factor that I absolutely despise about the ship is that when you are stationary and you have a little bit of momentum, the ship just keeps turning all the time. And so you need to reverse and get the momentum completely out of your ship and then come to a standstill. Now here I'm under leading, I'm over leading. Uh, I try to figure out where I should aim. And he's not really dodging and this is a PE-8. And it's not a ridiculous range. He's coming directly towards me. And I think to myself, come on, I, I, I need to hit him. And just when I was under leading, um, at this moment, the five ton bomb is already on its way. Look, this is the last shot. And that did the critical hit. And I got killed by the five ton bomb. Now, this is surprisingly <laughs> fragile, as, as I showed you. This is just absolutely getting wrecked by 40 millimeters but at the same time you come sometimes into those situations just watch how awful the turning is you have to reduce your speed um, you have to do uh, multiple tricks to actually turn and to not just uh, drift uh, onto a beach especially on those claustrophobically small maps and the objectives that is something that you really need to learn this is not an easy ship to drive this is a complete diva this is a complete drama queen and it just doesn't want the way that you want and there we help break him practically or it's a munition blow up we also deal with the other spaviero and we just now secured the objective but that's not all in that scene um because you know the problem is I want to make use of this gun, I need to kill stuff and this is probably the only objective that I'll get in this battle. And also if you just uh, go back a few seconds, you just could see how this thing drifts and to maneuver in those tight channels is really challenging. A normal ship is significantly easier to use. Again the top speed is fantastic um, with uh, up to 93 kilometers per hour so you can rush those far caps you can duel other hydrofoils uh, and you probably can outrange but watch what this he can do to unarmored destroyers and uh, yeah another thing is 
next to the rather low complement of uh, ammunition which also takes quite a long time to reload in the cap as you can observe um, you have to deal with this overheat so i probably could gun this guy down but i don't have the ammunition cap capacity overall um, I need to make sure that I don't get shot in return because they will probably hull break me. I have to work around the hull break. And uh, on top of this, well, the first stage ammo rack also has even less uh, ammunition capacity. So this is tricky to use, much like a Lamborghini, much like an Italian drama queen, diva, whatever. It has its charm, no doubt about this. But it's hilariously unpractical and you know this is more like a fun mobile but rather than a i don't know um, a, a daily workhorse where you can reliably get your silver lines and rp i i don't really think that this is such a good grinding machine so again if you get fully up to it versus those 4.7 destroyers uh, which happened like 70 80 percent of the time it's bad to use it's outrageously bad and you know there are some game modes where you're on those unnecessary large maps and you don't have the ammunition capacity to to even gun down reliably those um those uh, cargo ships but on the other hand this thing uh might be the better premium of the two i'll point this out in uh in a tank in a ship review on <laughs> on the geniere it's it's a nice ship it has also some good points about it but it is hopelessly underpowered and i have the statistics to confirm this and to show in comparison how doubly triply weak it is uh, it will make sense when you see the statistics this one though I'm not really a fan and uh, it was kind of frustrating more than uh, often to play this yes it has its moments but I'm not really sure it's worth the frustration and for that money uh, for grinding Italian ships they are just not worth it at the moment I'm sorry to say this I'm sorry for all you Italians out there that hope that this tech tree would be competitive the cruisers are hopelessly outgunned they have no real armor and the opposition is just absolutely brutal despite the HE enough and then the stock grind is horrible the destroyers are meh and uh, the majority of the patrol boats is also not really all that great at the moment I would hold back my money and I would wait for the premium cruiser I would wait for probably some buffs, some decompression, some changes for the for the uh, game mechanics. At the moment, I cannot point at one of those two premiums, in particular not at this one, and say it's worth it. I do not recommend this premium. I'm sorry, guys. And, you know, I'm honest to you guys. If you don't believe me, then I'm sorry. If you have already invested your money, I'm, I'm also sorry. But that's just how it is. That is Gaijin for you. This tech tree in its current configuration would be cool like would have been cool like three years ago, but not now. Not now. Definitely not. So that's it for me today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the uh, clarification. I hope you enjoyed the uh, background footage and the demonstration what it really uh, means to purchase this ship. And I think that this has been a good selection of scenes, both good and awesome, but also painful and ugly. And with that, uh, yeah, I hope you give this video a like, give it a subscribe if you want to see more. And we'll see each other in the skies, on the battlefields and on the waves of War Thunder.